Hi, I'm Kevin Ames for Photo Focus, and our guest today is Dave Cross, who's in charge of the Photoshop Virtual Summit. Dave, it's great to see you again. Tell me a little bit about the Photoshop Virtual Summit. Well, Kevin, thanks, first of all, for having me on this chat. It's, uh, it's an idea that started when the pandemic first uh, became a an issue for all of us when we found that all of the in-person events were being canceled so that for both uh, instructors and uh, users, there was no simple way to have the equivalent of a in-person conference. So I had this crazy idea of doing kind of a virtual conference. So I got on my email and phone and contacted a bunch of my Photoshop instructor friends. And, and a couple of years ago, we did our first uh, virtual summit and it went really well and we got great feedback and so now this is number four because it's people the, the the nicest feedback I get people just saying they really enjoy the event is when's the next one so that's that's really been nice to have people not just say they enjoyed it but can't wait for the subsequent one so now this is our fourth version of the Photoshop virtual summit great so when is the next one Dave well, it's the first week of May, May 2nd through the 6th, and it's basically five full days. We have 20 instructors each teaching two classes, so 40 classes spread wow. out over five days. And uh, it's the, the best part of all, and one of the things we're proud of, of the most is it's free to attend. So the classes uh, each day, eight classes become available to watch, and then they're available for 48 hours with the free pass. And then we also have an optional called a VIP pass, which is a paid option, which gives access, lifetime access to watch all of the classes, along with extra bonuses, for example, class notes, uh, downloadable exercise files. Then we have all kinds of bonuses that the VIPs get, including this year for the first time, a whole additional class, this one by the one and only Bert Monroy is doing a, another wow. class added on top of the 40 that you get as a, as a regular member. So well, it works Bert out well awesome. because- yeah, he is. And, and uh, it's, it's beautiful to be able to have something like that as a bonus for our VIPs. So people with the free pass can watch all the 40 classes during that sort of uh, limited time frame. And then if they wish to purchase the VIP pass, it again, gives them all the lifetime access as well as these other bonuses. Well, how much is the lifetime access? So it's the regular price is 159, but up until the start of the summit. So on the first day, it's the early bird price is $99. And that ends on noon on the first day of the summit. So on May 2nd. So it's 99 bucks for 41 classes, including the bonus Burt class. Right. And all, I mean, honestly, the, the instructors this time have been going above and beyond because we have like an additional 25 minute class from Ben Wilmore and uh, Christina Shirk did a 15 or 20 minute bonus class on like skin retouching and a lot of other instructors have done shorter, but additional videos or actions or cheat sheets or things like that. So there's lots of other bonuses that go well beyond the, the ability to watch the classes over and over again. Is there Q and A during the class? We don't have that because the classes in order to avoid any technology issues, all the classes are actually pre-recorded and are just shown for the first time at, at a particular uh, time on the schedule. Um, the, in the VIP area, there is sort of a comment section where the instructors try their best to go in. And so it's almost like the equivalent of a Q&A, but not exactly the same. It's not a live one. That, that makes perfect sense. I like your idea of taking technology out of the loop. Mm -hmm. That's great. And speaking of, of classes, we have a couple of clips and one that I really enjoyed is Lisa Carney's. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So, you know, Lisa's uh, uh, been a lifetime, <laughs> long time uh, retoucher for the entertainment industry. So when we were chatting about ideas for a class, I thought one of the interesting ideas was what, how, what do you do when you don't have a lot of time? Because you know, there's all these retouching techniques out there, but some of them take a long time. So I sort of said, what, what would you think about doing a class? It was kind of like, retouching under pressure or, you know, the idea being, I don't want to take two hours, I've got 15 minutes. So in this excerpt, she shows how she does uh, markups so that if especially if she's doing work for clients, everyone's on the same page. So you can decide what are the most important things that you need to be working on. Well, let's take a look at that clip now. 
Markups and managing expectation go hand in hand, and it's a great way of communicating. And it's like that old adage you hear sometimes, give me six hours to cut down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. Make a plan. So with markups, I like to separate kind of into three main areas, like cleaning up the non-negotiables. That would be like things like blemishes or birthmarks that you know you want out. Uh, you know, crosshairs, things that you know the client's pretty much going to want to have out. Second would be about mm, like manipulating or changing what's already there, like broad strokes. So it could even be like, like her chest is really light compared to her face. Her dark circles, that's going to be a broad stroke and that's going to take some time. The other thing when you're talking about the markups, like what is this for? Is this a hair ad? Is it a makeup ad or is it clothing ad? Like you really need to know what's this for. So in this case, it's a clothing ad. So we're gonna need to clean up some of this stuff here. And um, the rest of it, like her skin needs to be smooth. I like to put a double line to indicate smoothing or knocking down a little circle E could be to take out like that. Anywho, and then like on her hair. So her hair is kind of a big deal. Is her hair, how clean does it need to be? Because that's where a lot of time is going to be. So in this case, I would rec recommend that we knock down all the frizzies on the outside, but this is not a hair ad. So this is not going to have a ton of time spent cleaning up the hair. I will probably fill in the gaps here. And this is really important when, again, managing expectations because you got to figure out your time. How much lip enhancing do you need to do? How much eye cleanup? Does she need eyelashes? These kind of things. And again, this is managing expectations. How much time do you have? How much do they want to spend? And then it goes into other questions like masking. Does this need to be masked out? Because if it does, then you're going to treat the hair differently. How many images are there? Does the clothing need to have the color changed? Or is there enhancement? Enhance. You know, does it need to look sharper? Is this the hero of the shot? This is why markups are so incredibly, incredibly important. That's great. I've been using that technique myself for years to show clients. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting because Lisa even uses the same color that I do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so and that course, was really awesome. Of course, the rest of her, you know, after she does that, then she starts to show the actual technique she uses to uh, to work on the images. So that's right. one of her two classes. The other class she's doing, which I'm also very interested to watch is um, I asked her if it was possible for her to do kind of a breakdown, almost like uh, deconstruct some of the projects she's been involved in over the, the last few years. So she's taken some of the projects, some of which we'll probably recognize and kind of go through the process of how, how she uh, faced and, and meet and met some of the challenges that were in that she was asked to do. Well, Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw has come a long way since we saw uh, Russell Preston Brown introduce it as a right. $99 plugin to Photoshop <laughs> 7. And yeah. one of the exciting things about ACR now is, well, I shouldn't call it ACR, it's Camera Raw, is that it's got really enhanced masking capabilities. Is there any classes on that? Yeah, in fact, Blake Rudis, who's, uh, I would say, is right up there in terms of the experts in camera raw. You know, a lot of people teach Lightroom and maybe a little bit of camera raw. He's kind of the opposite. He focuses on camera raw and relates how Lightroom users can kind of apply the same theory. So he has a class that's on um, unmasking the new raw masking techniques. And in fact, we have an excerpt from that one as well. Now you'll see that we have several different masks that we can select. The first one that I want to talk about is going to be select subject because we have a subject here and I want to select her and separate her from the background. Typically, this was something that could only be easily done in Photoshop before, but with the new advancements in Adobe Camera Raw, this is incredible. So we're going to press select subject and magically the little circles are going to spin and boom, our subject is selected. Now, if we look at our mask here, these are going to be whatever settings I had set from the past. If you don't want that, you can set reset sliders automatically and then your past settings won't be there. Or you can just press this little reset button here and it'll reset all of your settings. The most important thing here is going to be analyzing the mask. Did it create a good mask for our subject? I believe the answer is yes. 
Now you might be wondering why mine is showing in magenta. I always have my mask showing in the color magenta because I think it's easier to see that on any type of image because we typically don't see magenta in our photographs. How we change that, click the show overlay button on and then click right here for the color. I like to have this set directly over the magenta color. I want the brightness all the way up and I want the opacity all the way up because this doesn't help me. This doesn't show me how much volume is in that mask. This shows me how much volume is in that mask. And you'll see that later when we start getting into the highlights and shadows selections. Now I want this to be on the affected areas. That way I know whatever is in the color magenta is going to be my object. If you want to think about this in reverse and change it to the unaffected areas so that as you edit, you can see what's happening to your actual selection. You can do that too. I typically use it as an assessment tool, so I'm going to make it the affected areas. Okay. Now when we turn show overlay on and off, it just gives us a visual representation of where our mask is actually selecting here. So the cool thing about this is that we can actually rename these masks now. So I'm going to double click this and call this girl. I guess I could just call it subject, but I'll call her girl. <laughs> now, there is an opposite selection for this that many people don't realize you have access to, and that's select background. But how the heck are you going to select the background when you don't see, when you go to create new mask, select background? Well, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to go here to where it says more options. And I'm going to say duplicate girl. So now I've got her duplicated. How do we get the inverse selection for this? Well, you see here where we have the subject selection. If we click these three dots, there's an invert button here. When we click that, bam, it's magically going to select the inverse. So now what we have is a foreground background separation or subject background separation right at the raw level. So I'll call one the subject or girl and the other one background. So now I'm going to click on the girl here. I can edit her independently from the background. So here I might, you know, increase a little bit of exposure on her, but not a whole lot. Maybe reduce some of those highlights because they're kind of strong, but open up some of those shadows just a little bit so they aren't quite as strong on the side of her face. And then that looks pretty good for me there. Now the background. Let's say with the background, I want a lot more exposure back there to brighten that up, to make it really feel like the brightness coming in from this window is affecting the side of her face quite a bit. So I'll increase the exposure of that background, brightens up that exposure, helps separate her from the background and almost make this feel like she's in this magical light that is just making her gleam, right? So what I want you to gather from this is you actually have two selections from any one selection. You have the actual subject that you selected and then you have the idea that you can invert that selection. I use those all the time. It's such a great tip and he teaches it so well. And really I learned two or three things right there that in just poking around in it, I had, I didn't know. So right. I'm richer for it. And if this is an example of the kind of learning that people are going to get at the virtual Photoshop summit, Photoshop virtual summit, sorry, got that backwards. <laughs> I think it's going to be an amazing value considering that it's free for the first 48 hours. Yeah. And honestly, Kevin, I mean, when I, I have the benefit of, of talking with the instructors and, and bouncing ideas off with them. And uh, there's a number, for example, just earlier today, I was talking with Glenn Dewis about his classes and the two classes he's doing are both contain almost all the content is, is stuff that he's just never shown before anywhere. You know, often some instructors do, well, I have YouTube and I have teach for these people, but these, that happens quite often that people uh, take, new ideas. And uh, Ben Wilmore is another example where he's doing something called luminosity masking 3.0, which is actually the equivalent of luminosity masking, but not using channels. It's really quite wow. interesting. So there's lots of uh, content of all levels. So we even have a class that's Photoshop for beginners. So if someone's still starting out, uh, Matt Kluskowski is also doing a class called Photoshop for Lightroom users, which is specifically aimed at people who mostly use Lightroom and want to dip their toes into the Photoshop world. So there's there's lots of amazing classes taught by some pretty much world-class instructors. So how does someone sign up? How does someone get involved and get started with the Photoshop Virtual Summit? Sure, well, we'll, we'll put a link on the page and you, it takes you right to the main Photoshop Summit page. And there you'll see a button right there that says free pass. And if you wanna learn more about the VIP option, that's available as well. You'll also see all the instructors with 
classes they'll be teaching. And I'm right in the middle now of actually recording chats with each instructor so that they talk a little bit about what their classes are all about. So not just seeing a written description, but actually hear the instructor chat about them. That's all on that same main page. That's a great idea. And that will make it more uh, accessible to your people that are attending. I know I'm planning on taking a look uh, just based on the clips that we've seen. They're really terrific. So the dates again? May 2nd through the 6th for the Photoshop Virtual Summit version 4.0. Yes, sir. Dave Cross, with 30 years in instructing Photoshop and Adobe products, it's so good to see you again, my friend, and I wish you great success in the summit. For Thanks, Photo Kevin. Focus and for Dave Cross, I'm Kevin Ames.